Tom Flood lives in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. He spent his career in the advertising industry. For years, a large part of his work was creating campaigns for the auto industry, even though for much of this time, he was commuting to work on a bicycle and facing a hostile environment caused by the very products he was helping to sell. But Tom's epiphany only happened when he tried to ride with his young boys to preschool. Suddenly, he realised that our society has been perpetuating a myth that cars are always a good thing for our cities and families. Tom then began to use his considerable talents to create impactful images and videos to tell a completely different story. In this episode, you'll see 10 stunning examples of his work and Tom will share the backstories behind his sometimes tragic motivations to produce each one. Tom Flood, thanks for coming on Influencers. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now, through the marvels of technology, you're speaking to me from Hamilton, Ontario, which is pretty much the other side of the planet to where we're sitting. So tell us a bit about Hamilton. How long have you lived there? Just describe the city and the cycling scene there. Yeah, we moved here about seven years ago. We lived in Toronto for, for many years um, and wanted just kind of a different pace of life. So decided to move 45 minutes down the road from Toronto to the to the west in Hamilton, which is about a half a million people now, um, an urban center. And it's it's been a really great place for us. Uh, we do a lot of cycling here, a lot of uh, cycling kids to school, walking to school with our kids, and it's been a it's been a great city for us. And there's a lot of change going on in Hamilton over the last uh, 20 years now. So yeah, lot, lot, lots of change. So you're glad you made the move. We are all very happy to be here. It's been a very accepting city of us and been very giving to us. So we're trying our best to uh, to to give back to the city as well. Excellent. Now you've earned a worldwide reputation in cycling media through your work which I would describe as both insightful and creatively brilliant. So how would you describe your work? Huh, that, that, that's a good question. Thank you for, for, for the kind words. Um, I think the, the best description that um, I, I, would, I would give the work that I've been doing in, this, in the cycling kind of advocacy space, I, I mean, for me, it really comes down to um, trying to highlight the absurdity that's on our streets. And that's that's the biggest driver for me and what's kind of pushed me into this space. Um, you know, I hate to use the word, but accidentally ending ending up in this space was just seeing, you know, the complete imbalance on our streets. So I'm really just essentially trying to highlight the imbalance that, that um, is present every day for every single person that is outside of a car and bring that to um, try to try to open people people's eyes. And so we're going to look in a minute at some still images and some videos, but, but how would you describe them? Would you describe them as memes, images, advertisements, campaigns? How would you describe your work in that way? So, yeah, in that way, I guess they, they, I come from the advertising world. So I think that seeps through into some of the, the creative elements that are built. There's never really any intention uh, specifically, but I, I think some of them are, are set up to be built to kind of mimic advertising and, and using some of the same uh, tricks and tools that, that you know, I kind of honed in, in my career. And you weren't always doing this sort of work, as in cycling work in particular. Can you just describe the moment that changed the course of your career? Yeah, for sure. Um, so again, I worked in advertising. I actually worked on auto accounts for for many years doing corporate branding and positioning of different vehicles. So essentially really storytelling for, for the auto industry. And it was very strange because I would be, this is when I was in Toronto, I'd be cycling to work every day, kind of battling the, the dangers and the drivers getting to work and then spending, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day um, developing content that perpetuates that culture that was endangering me on the way in and the way out of work. So I was, uh, you know, it's something I remember when I'm speaking to other people because not everyone's had that awakening yet. So for me, to answer your question, that awakening came the first time I took my kids to, to daycare and school on their bikes for the first time. And it was it, it was an immediate, you know, light bulb just 
just on right away. Just it could, I could not believe it, seeing it through their perspective. And I don't know how I missed it for so, so long, but seeing it through, you know, a more vulnerable road user's eyes and through their perspective just changed everything for me. And, and uh, you know, once you see it, you can't unsee it and it's hard to step away from it. Now, a lot of people in, if you like, the bike advocacy community, to use a catchphrase, you know, love what you do and would like to be able to do likewise, but you've had both tertiary training and a long professional career with your own creative advertising agency as well. So how important has all this experience and work been in helping you create the current body of work that you're creating? Yeah, I, I think I think it's been been very helpful in that way. And again, I've never in, never intentionally set out to to do this or utilize those those skills and tools that I learned you know, kind of what, what I was doing previously. Um, so it has been important. But I think the the bigger thing is once people have had their eyes opened up and to see that imbalance, I, I'm not. You know, it's it's about digging into the story that's on our street. And to me, I guess somewhat that comes uh, somewhat naturally to do. But there's there's stories that all of us can tell. It's just a matter of finding finding the right notes to to strike. Well, I think you certainly do strike some right notes. I must say right now that uh, I showed your work to my wife, for example, and she was literally moved to tears. On, on some of the, some of the pieces, so I'm sure she'll greatly appreciate me saying that for, for public consumption, not, but uh, it, it does have a very powerful impact. So now let's just have a look at a few and see why they do have such a powerful impact. And perhaps this will be helpful for others that might be watching this from wherever they are in the world as to ideas they can implement in their local community. So the first one we'll look at is barriers. Sometimes the best way to remove barriers is to add one. Um, did you come up with this idea and how did you come up with that? So that, that picture was taken just on a random trip in Toronto one day and just was trying to snap some shots of some nice <laughs> concrete barriers um, that I was hoping we could maybe implement where we are in our city. And so there was no intention for that to be anything other than more of a reference point for me at a different point. And uh, I just kind of flipped through my phone and, and saw that and it just had the right look and the right feel um, that could be very, and that's a very much traditional type advertisement, kind of a traditional kind of out of home print style ad with, you know, obviously a large image, large type, and just, you know, a, a kind of a, a play on kind of a, flipped phrase for the for the headline um, so there was there was no intent at the beginning of taking that picture to make that anything it just came later now i have to ask is it just coincidence that there's a tesla in the background an electric <laughs> it's car? completely co <laughs> complete coincidence yeah but it is serendipitous isn't it because there's a there's a whole issue there about Electric cars are going to be the savior of cities. We're all okay. We don't have to do anything else. But as you would know, and many others in the active transport micromobility space know, that's not in fact the answer in, in its entirety at all. Yeah, that, that, that's for sure. And again, I mean, there's obviously a, a, a large role for that, but um, not, the, not the full answer, that's for sure. Okay, next, let, let's move on to the bell. Um, and I'll read the caption because it's quite small. And if someone's watching this on a mobile device or whatever, they might not be able to read it. And it says, there will never be a bell loud enough, a helmet strong enough, or clothing bright enough to make up for poor infrastructure. So yeah. you wrote that? Yeah. That, um, so that, that, that was, um, that's my child in front of me. And that's, going to school in, in grade one and I documented many of our rides as we'd go to school and that was still kind of on the periphery of me you know taking a further step into building out creative pieces to tell stories that was more of just a snapshot for me to show our counselors and, and things like that locally and it was such a in the end it was a very powerful image 
and um, truly just shows the imbalance and again the absurdity that's on our streets and what we ask our children to do to go to school. Um, and then when we ask them to go to school, what we what we ask them to do to go to school on you know bike to school day or or whatever you need, want to call it, um, and it just reinforces you know how we how we just put the messaging and all effort into the wrong space. Um, and I think the image perfectly captures how you know those words tell that story because it's all we do is that we preach safety for everybody outside the car so that everybody inside the car can be dangerous. And that's the bottom line. And I think we hear a lot about bells. We hear a lot about high visibility. And so I just wanted to wrap that up into a nice little statement that would hopefully resonate with lots of people because I think there's something that's very important to me is that I, again, found this space because of taking my kids to school. And I think it's a very relatable topic um, and it shouldn't be a divisive or politicized topic. It, it is, but it really shouldn't be. So if we want to reach across that aisle and connect with other people, I, I think using the vulnerability of a child, not in a, you know, save the children type of manner, but in a, in a way that is as simple as that simple joy of biking to school is something that we should all strive for in our cities and something that we should be able to relate to. So when you see the image of the child next to, you know, a, a, a large truck with, you know, a line of paint, and then you, you hear those words of, you know, our city leaders and police telling them, you know, put a bell on, where's your helmet, kid? It's, it's absolutely ludicrous. And I think it highlights some of the absurdity that, again, is, is on our streets and sitting in our council chambers. I couldn't agree more with you, Tom. I must ask a few of the elements that make that more powerful, that image. Your son seems to be leaning over almost in fright. Was that just, once again, a coincidence or the moment? Or, and also the crack being right there on the road, was that teed up deliberately? No, not at all. These weren't, these, again, th those, these were very random and I wish I, <laughs> I, I don't wish that, but um, nothing was planned. It was just a shot of us going to school and me happening to be with my camera out riding right behind him. And, and you know, that, that image, yeah, it, it, it really sticks with me because it represents a very specific time in my journey with, with uh, with my kids getting them to school on their bikes and some of the you know the obstacles that that we face as people outside of the car. You're selling yourself short here, Tom. You should be saying, "Oh yes, it was all stage management. <laughs> we had to we had to do ten takes." <laughs> yeah, truck... yeah. Try again, kid. <laughs> was the truck parked? Is it in a queue of traffic for a light, or was it was it moving? It it, it was moving. It was very very slow. It's a residential street. Um, but 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 again, that just speaks to speaks to the situation and how we you know where we place value and what we prioritize. But yeah, the, the truck wasn't speeding by any means. Okay, let's move on to the next one: the trucks and bikes. So you've got the pickup truck with all of the features written around it, and then you've got presumably once again your son or both of your sons. Yeah, that that's both of my sons, and again I. I hate to sell myself short, as you said, but that was just me taking a picture of them going off to school. Um, and I was going to ride with them. And I remember they yelled back at me, Dad, can you pretend you're not with us? And they started riding away. I was like, oh, geez, I already hit that age. And they were so young. <laughs> and that's that's why I snapped that picture to tell my partner, like, hey, they're already telling me not to ride with them. This is, this, I can't believe they're teenagers already. Um, but then when I looked at the shot later, it just, again, for the reasons that you see it, uh, now is that it's just that again that striking imbalance this time it, the, the point is to highlight where we prioritize and place safety um, and again it's absurd what we do to you know protect everybody that's inside a vehicle uh, versus everybody outside the vehicle and you know what we consider standard safety for a car and what we consider standard safety for a bicycle all these things that I think we can all relate to if we see them positioned in the right way just how ridiculous it actually is I think it's inspired the font that you've used for the word paint like a young child's <laughs> handwriting right that that was Did intentional you, that was intentional boom boom we'll <laughs> give <laughs> you full one. Full marks Thank for you. that one. But also, <laughs> you clearly know how to use contrast. You use contrast as a powerful effect, both in your still images and your videos. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, I thank you for those those kind words, and I, I, I appreciate it, And it, it, but I think it stems directly from the, 
the, the stark contrast that is on our streets every single day. I mean, it's 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 the I think the ultimate way to portray, um, you know, how again how and where we place value on our streets and for who. Okay, now we'll move on to another one that uses contrast. We all make sacrifices. What was the inspiration behind that image? And tell me behind the story behind that. Yeah, the inspiration. Yeah, that was that was very intentional. Obviously, um, I, I remember I took a picture of both of my kids sitting on the curb of just outside of our of our of our home here, and they were just waiting and waiting for for cars to to pass so they can go play, which is you know nothing out of the ordinary, and that's what kids do. But it was just heartbreaking because it was taking so long for them to get that moment of of joy to play on their streets, and it was just it was a it was a really stark black and white image of them sitting there, which I've I've never shared, um, and I I I just remember thinking about you know we should all really give these kids a pat on the back for letting us all have you know have a go at the, on our car in our cars all day long. We should probably you know give them pin some medals on these kids because they've given up everything for for us just to speed around um and then that's where that came from so i thought i would just try to highlight what the kids have sacrificed for us and what we in turn as drivers because i am a driver um have sacrificed for them which is absolutely nothing um and i thought maybe placing it on a chalkboard to highlight you know the school age you know idea and concept behind it and the way to be kind of somewhat teaching and not too preachy, but but teaching. So that that was the idea behind that. It was just my kids out front waiting way too long um, for the streets to clear, so they go kick a ball around. And that was a good question because I've no one's no one's asked me that before, and I've never actually mentioned where that came from. Well, look, I'm honoured because you have attracted a lot of media, even in Australia. I was only on a a, a group of um, traffic engineers and city officials that I meet with via Zoom last night and your name came up in your latest video, which has only just come out, famous incident with the uh, traffic, I don't know what you call them over there, traffic warden. Yeah, crossing guard over here. That was literally doing everything right and doing their job, shepherding a pedestrian across the crossing and, and got run over on video and, and your a commentary on that your modified video uh, is is being widely talked about in Australia right now I can tell you wow. yes wow. okay Tom those still images are great now we're going to roll on to five videos and we'll, we'll start with choices and we'll play it now so people can see it and then we'll talk about it in 30 seconds Now, Tom, I've watched that at least half a dozen times and I still get emotional watching that. And especially since my wife's you know, very strong reaction to that video. So have you found that other people have had such an impact from that video? And, and why do you think that is? Yeah, I, I, other people have had that a similar reaction and I actually still get kind of emotional when I think about it and not because I think I'm created something great but it was the reason that video came to be was um there was a, a young boy here in hamilton who was hit in the crosswalk with a crossing guard very similar to what we just spoke about um uh with the crossing guard in in new jersey he was in a crosswalk walking home from school with a crossing guard and the driver of a pickup truck just went right through and and he died like a, a day later and that really really hit me really really hard he was about the same age as my child so I ended up writing 
this uh, somewhat of a note to sit this kind of open letter to city council, just highlighting all these things and just how ridiculous the state of our streets are and, you know, how it's been falsely positioned, the wrong narratives. And, you know, these aren't accidents. These are results and the results of your specific choices that have led us here. So um, I turned that note, this kind of open letter into, into that video to try to really capture you know, at such a base level of understanding what some of the problems are here. And it's the problems are our choices that we continually make. We we are doing this and no one is reining it in. Um, so I think, sorry, your question was whether had a similar reaction. The answer is yes. And I I still have a reaction because I think of that that boy and his name was Jude Strickland. And yeah, it's um, it's just it. I think it's a powerful statement and I think it provides the right tone and balance that videos and content that in this space, in this kind of advocacy space, um, not the advocacy space, sorry, it's, it's in the, in the, you know, in our road safety space that they are completely tone deaf and lack, they lack sort of any sort of emotion, any sort of insight and awareness or understanding of the landscape that's on our streets. If you think about, um, some PSAs, I'm sure you have them where you are, that the police put out, that the city put out. They're absolutely ridiculous. They're atrocious. They're poorly done. They're not thought out. They're checking boxes, right? And they're checking the wrong boxes. And so putting this together was, you know, sort of, sort of a, you know, a counter message to, and a, and a reality check to what, what are we doing? Why are we continually victim blaming? Why are we continually, you know, not regulating ridiculous vehicles? Why are we not building human centric, you know, uh, spaces for our children. It's all these things that culminated that I just tried to boil down and distill into, uh, you know, 35 seconds or 40 seconds of a video. But it came from a really, really, really dark spot. Well, I think you did a fantastic job. I really do. I think it's very, very powerful. Now, Tom, let's look at the next video, which is called Compromise. I'll just play that so people can see it. Drop the taco. Get in the car. Does this Sentra feel like a compromise to you? Wait, what? Bumpy. The handling, it's good, right? Watch this. So if this Nissan Sentra isn't going to compromise, why should you? So once again, a very powerful video and the contrast between the sense of entitlement of the lady driver versus the innocence of the child is, is really quite quite jarring was that your intention yeah i mean these this is just such a small example of of what you know we're up against with 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 auto ads you know it, it to, to many it you know without having the placement of, of other of footage inside of it or editing it it's just a regular auto ad um but it's just it's <laughs> putting that in obviously strikes that 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 contrast that you mentioned but it just shows how reckless we position vehicles and driving um, in everyday life. That city looks like any city you could be in. But of course, everything is always covered off by a small little legal disclaimer in, you know, two point font at the very bottom of the screen. Um, so, you know, it may not be, you know, some over dramatic, um, you know, horrifying Dodge auto ad. But the point is, is that all of these ads promote reckless driving and you know when it's done over and over and over and over again for you know 50 60 years of of you know of advertising and marketing and 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 being you know kind of beaten into everybody you start to accept that that is okay to do that and you know some people would say well you know isn't it's just marketing it's fantasy and and that and that's true to some respect but with with the, not all consumer products are built to kill and not all consumer products you know, take the lives of 40,000 Americans or, you know, 1.35 million people globally every single year. So to me, it's much more than just fantasy marketing at that point when we get into auto advertising. Absolutely. Let's move on to the next video called No Bravado. <laughs> So 
So when I sent you my initial selection, you asked it, asked me to add this one. Why was that? I, well, I, 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 I really like it, uh, but I like it because it's, it's completely an anti-auto ad. It's exactly what auto ads, it, 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 so to me, it's, it's bicycles are delivering the promises that cars make. And that's what I think this, this ad tells. You don't need celebrities in this. You don't need big brash, you know, action sequences. You don't need a huge budget. You don't need, you know, all sorts of stunts. You really just need the bicycle in its purest form, which in, in the ad, of course, bicycles are just, you know, kind of going right past all the vehicular traffic that are stuck in themselves, essentially. Um, and I think that's a that's just a testament to the power of the mobility that 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 the bicycle you know, and other active, active transportation modes offer. Um, and I just, I love, I love the contrast in this where it's bicycles just simply flowing past, um, you know, a traffic jam of, of drivers in their cars. And it's, you know, I like the music too, so. Well, I must, I like the music too. And I thought, I recognize that music. It's been on 101 ads, but what the heck is it? So I had to Shazam it, of course, and I found out it was Cello Concerto Number no. 1 by J.S. Bach. So was there a particular reason for you choosing that soundtrack? Yeah, I just, I just like the feel of it. it. It feels celebratory. It feels joyous. And, you know, not everything I need to do has to be, um, you know, going down a darker, darker place. It also can be a positive space. And I think that that music strikes that, again, the right, the right tone and mood for what the, the message is trying to communicate. Yes, well, I think that's one of two what I would call happy ads in this series of five that we're looking at. So let's move on to the second feel-good happy ad now, which you've called Not Complicated. Once again, I wouldn't mind asking about the music in a minute, but just starting with the more serious, you would think that the safety of our children would provoke action. You know, why do Safe Routes to Schools campaigns and so on have such an uphill battle? The, I mean, it's the, the, the ultimate question. And in my experience, and which that's what I can speak to here, is that anytime we want to, you know, increase safety for people outside of the car, um, our, some councillors will just continually give in to the pressures of the constituents that feel they're going to lose their, their, their right to, you know, unobstructed and speedy and expedient, expedient vehicular movement, which is apparently the only thing that matters in any city <laughs> across the globe. It's the one thing that, you know, you know, binds many of our, our cities and a lot of the things that connect us, sadly, is that that just absolute reverence for the movement of the driver. And that's, again, the bottom line, sadly. And on a slightly happier note, it is lovely music. And I love the little touch of the scratchy needle going down on the vinyl record at the start, which I'm sure was a sound effect that you added later. Uh, what was that piece of music and why did you choose it? So that's actually a former songwriting partner of mine. Um, and it's a, a band of his called Holly Echo. Um, and the song's called Fire. And I absolutely love that song. It's like 10 or 15 years old now. But it's everybody should look that look up uh, this guy. His name's Pat Ride. He's a brilliant singer-songwriter. And I used to write with him, was in bands with him for many years. And now he's done all sorts of great stuff um, without me. Um, but uh, So I love the music. But I love the tone of the music. And that, that specific video is like some of my favorite moments of my me and my kids biking to school together and just that pure pure joy and excitement of getting to school and you can see the the, the younger one just speed pedaling and just it's it's just an absolute blast and it's the absolute joy that so gets robbed from so many from so many people for so many uh in so many different places and again it's kind of a play off the same thing that that one image was about the bell 
and the, and the, and the high vis, all that stuff. We do everything but what actually works to make, you know, routes to school safe. One more video to go, priceless. So to me, personally, this was the most disturbing of all. And you've used a technique that I know Alfred Hitchcock used to use, which is that the villain is actually someone next door, someone socially acceptable, someone who looks nice, who doesn't look like a villain. You know, the very well-dressed, you know, no doubt socially responsible lady uh, can become a, a child killer. Was that uh, part of your motivation for this video? That that's exactly it. It's just the everyday violence that small little actions um, can lead to. And again, it's it's about highlighting how we are imperfect, and as as drivers, because again, I am a driver, and these small lapses in judgment, attention should not cost. You know, should not be should not take the life of a of a person on the street on on a bicycle or walking or or in a car, and that is it's really it's really a pitch for you know protected infrastructure for people outside of the car and safer spaces because essentially we could all be that person we don't want to be that person and I strive every day to not um, you know have a lapse in judgment or a lapse in focus but the reality is we're imperfect we're humans we're going to make mistakes so we need to ensure that we have. Uh, the infrastructure in place to allow, you know, this is, I'm preaching to the choir here, to, to allow for those mistakes to actually happen. Okay, so we've watched five superb videos and seen five great still images. How would you like to see your work being used? That's a, a, a great question. I, again, I've, I've, this was never intentional. This kind of just built on you know every 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 day kind of built a little bit more and i would love to see messages like this more frequently um in the mainstream that would be my goal as a whole for this this community of of people that are making change not just my messages i'm happy to take part um and, and do it and do a small part here but i just i really think we need to change the narrative in the mainstream culture um around how we talk about people outside of the car um, how we talk about safety for people outside of the car and, and, and really focus and reprioritize, you know, for so long, what we've done is we've essentially, you know, prioritized the predator and, and demonize their prey. And that's what's happened in our kind of mainstream discussion. Um, and, and it, that needs to change. So I would, I would love for any of these messages to be out there in a more broader sense, um, but I would be happy for anyone's messages that, you know, are, are, are attacking the root issues of, of road violence that are just devastating families every single day. It's, it's just nonstop. It's a nightmare every day. And the worst part is that we know the solutions. We know how to change things. We just refuse to. And that's what's that's what motivates. You know, that's one thing that motivates me is that we know the solution. So it's about trying to get to that solution and letting people see um letting people kind of you know pulling back the curtains you know as one way to put it um yeah i think that's a long-winded answer sorry probably went off topic there <laughs> it's a brilliant answer tom you don't need to apologize at all but one thing that you mentioned a couple of minutes back in there you know you would like this to to get out and a couple of specific examples or ideas like if a local advocacy group uh, wanted to take up some of your ideas and perhaps put it into a, a local context, being an Australian or an English context or whatever. Uh, how would you feel about them using your creative ideas and superimposing their lo local issues? Yeah, that that would. If anyone's interested, happy to collaborate. And if there's a, if there's a use for that, then yeah, let, please let me know. I'm happy to connect. 
And what if it's a, a philanthropist, and I'm sorry I don't have one in my back pocket that I can just pull out, but if some wealthy philanthropist or um, charity wanted to fund mainstream media campaigns based upon some of your work, how would you feel about that? I would be very happy. I think that would be incredible. Like I, like I said, we've been getting inundated with the wrong messages for, you know, 50 years, 100 years now, and, you know, hyper accelerated in the last 40 years with, like I said, like the auto advertising, just owning every single, you know, media space available. And then, you know, our leaders in, in the police and the city who just continually toe the line of victim blaming and shaming. It's it, it needs to change. And, you know, for me, the one of the big things that's got me involved here is that when I first started to go to council meetings and hear from other from councillors and they would position what I was saying. So I would go and say, you know, can we try to improve this for, for some kids to get to school? And then it was positioned back to me that I was some sort of radical, which I was not that for me, that is what lit the fire under me because I could not believe that wanting some kids to get to elementary school was considered radical. It was it was it's such a damning indictment on on again where we who we prioritize and what we place value. You know, if wanting kids to get to school is extreme, then you know something obviously needs to change, and that's that's what set me down this path, and that's what keeps me going. Well, that's a great motivation, and you you are well down this path now. And where does this path lead from here, Tom? What's next for you in this space? There's a, yeah, I, I don't really know exactly. There's a few things. I've been doing some lectures at um, some different, uh, with, for some different organizations, um, for some universities coming up in the next few months. So it just kind of keeps going. And I don't know where the end is, if there is an end, but um, I'm happy to take part in, like I said, add my voice, my small voice to, to so much work that so many people have done. So I'm happy to add a, a little part to that. Tom Flood, thanks for being an influencer. Thank you.